Hello, I'm Rob Adair. I'm up at the Grand Rapids location. John's just went through precision rebuilds on pumps. Some of that translates to what we do here, but we have a Falk 1060 right angle gear drive that we'd like to go over. We uh, laid all the parts out, they've been inspected, cleaned, and now it's ready for assembly. On this particular box, we had a cause of failure, lack of lubrication. Uh, the bearings ultimately spun in the housing. This bearing actually welded itself on the race. We, uh, the lack of lubrication also sent, uh, when the bearing started to fail, a misalignment and it put wear on both the gears. And then there's a fit where this gear goes on the shaft that's out of tolerance, so we have to replace this shaft. Uh, all of the bearings were uh, in tough shape, but we always replace the bearings and seals on a rebuild. Here we cooled the shaft to a specified temperature with liquid nitrogen and heated the gear to specified temperatures in order to facilitate uh, installing the gear onto the shaft. We've partially assembled the output shaft uh, that consists of two Timken roller, tapered roller bearings, uh, a full pack of shims, and we've torqued the bolts, uh, the bearing cover bolts down to a specified value. Um, we're then going to check the axial clearance in the shaft. We're looking to get that to a specified value by removing shims. Once we have the axial shaft clearance set, we'll then remove the correct amount of shims in order to give us a uh, proper pre preload on the bearings. Uh, it's important to get all these values and uh, everything torqued to specifications in order to ensure precision repair. So Todd's going to go ahead and check the, the uh, bearing clearance with the full shim pack in uh, the bearing cover. What we're going to do is with the dial indicator we're going to check axial clearance which is actually the movement up and down on the shaft to set the clearance of the two bearings in the bores. So I'll zero out the dial indicator. To zero. And making sure that the shaft is seated all the way down to the bottom to get the, the full clearance out of the bearing. So you can usually tap with a, a dead blow hammer to seat everything down. Then we'll just lift up on the keyway to get my clearance, find out what it is. Sitting at about 10 thou clearance. Now that we've determined what the axial clearance is, manufacturer specs for this shaft has preload on the shaft or for the bearings. So we have 10 thou clearance and we need negative three to five thousandths clearance. So removing the shims out of the bottom of the cover, I'll take 10 thou plus the preload, which would be three thou. So I would take 13 thou shims out of the bottom of the shim pack in order to get preload on the bearings. We remove the bearing cover, we remove two shims, and now we've reinstalled the bearing cover torqued back to values, and we're going to recheck our end clearance. Todd's gonna to do that right now. Now to check axial clearance again after removing the shims. I'm gonna tap and seat the bearing back down to the bottom. Zero with the dial indicator. Pry up on the shaft to getting 3 thou clearance. So my next step to get the preload for the shaft and for the bearings, I'm gonna remove six more thou shims out of the shim pack to get to my preload. <laughs> Sorry, no. Oh, that's fine.
We've assembled the output shaft and set the axial bearing clearance. We now have to set the correct mounting distance, which is done by adding or subtracting shims between the two housings here. Once that's complete, we're then going to uh, set the backlash, uh, which will be done through an inspection hole on the side. Once that's complete, we will then, since we have the bluing on here, we'll then do the patterning and uh, make sure we got good gear mesh. We set the correct mounting distance and backlash we put bluing on the gear to check the patterning to ensure that we're getting proper gear mesh. Uh, everything looks good. We'll now put it back together and uh, send it out for paint. Once the reducer is assembled and final inspections are made, we then send it off to the paint booth. There, it gets the final cleaning. It'll get taped off and then painted with a, uh, either industrial paint or epoxy.